the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news on the local Colorado economy and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host, Chris Gorog, brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. Chris is personable and opens up with our guests on the issues we all would like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Welcome to today's episode of New Cyber Frontier. On today's episode, we have the special occurrence of a new partner coming into to New Cyber Frontier here. Uh, Dr. Wanda Kusar, who we have on today, is going to be our host for some of the shows from going forward. And we always like to have him sit and talk to me before we throw him into the deep end. But we've already recorded some of your shows, so too late, huh? Yes, you have, Chris. <laughs> and thank you for inviting me back. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, well, we definitely are. We we need you in the mix. Um, there's there's so many so many reasons why I'll let you give your background a little bit, but um, some of us and most of our the hosts here are very technical people, um, and and we needed somebody to come from a little bit different perspective, um, and uh, handle some of our even our women in cyber and try and be that that personable side, the softer side of of new cyber frontier, we'll say. But uh, give us give us your background. Tell us where you came from and how you got to uh, to be here. And you know the break time, so just okay. kind of run up to it, and then we'll let you we'll let you stop for the break, and then we'll go and talk some more. Okay. Well, um, I happen to have a doctor of management uh, in with a concentration in environmental and social sustainability, and I was invited to a career event. Uh, at a local university and I ran into Greg uh, who's involved with the new Cyber Frontiers uh, Secure Net and I walked up to him after he gave his presentation and I was just astounded I was like there's a real connection between sustainability mm -hmm. and blockchain I saw it immediately and uh, we call problems, wicked, wicked problems in the sustainability arena. And I'm sitting there saying, wow, they're talking about wicked problems. <laughs> so maybe I should get involved. And he also expressed that people who are good writers would be needed for policy development. And I am a good writer. I'm mm -hmm. a writing guru. Granted, I attended because I teach career planning and management as well, and I'm always looking out for students mm -hmm. and some potential careers for them, and I incorporate that in my curriculum mm -hmm. when I teach. But I ended up getting involved myself. Yeah, and you know what? If we look at, I know you have a very interesting background. And some of your recent trips, I was just kind of like, whoa. <laughs> Tell us about what, what you're like. We want to know about what, what Wanda's like. Here. Well, wow. I ended up, after having DNA testing, going all the way back to 2006. And something interesting was uncovered. That I had lineage to the Mende tribe of Sierra Leone. And last year, I connected with someone who also had lineage to, to the Mende tribe. And they were trying to get a group of Mende to go to Sierra Leone during what they call the year of return. Mm -hmm. okay? and slavery started in 1619 and 400 years later. So I was like, this sounds really interesting. Sounds like something I should do. Little did I know, three days before we were to leave, the state house reached out to us and started processing us for dual citizenship. We had to fill out applications. When we got there the second day, we were in an immigration office. And we received something called the ECOWAS passport. ECOWAS stands for Economic Community of West African States. And apparently, 15 states formed a trade union. 
and we were asked to commit to helping them build economic development and Sierra Leone specifically is focusing on tourism mm -hmm. so I'm in the deep right now uh, I was given land I was renamed while I was there uh, I discovered that I have a lineage to a royal family the Payako family and I met two of the paramount chiefs which are equivalent to kings and I was renamed my bondo and my bondo stands for leader of the female bondo society because they're noted for secret life skill schools so that's what happened Chris and that was amazing let's take a break we'll hear from our sponsor we'll be right back after a minute cyber resilience institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. On today we're interviewing our new host to be who is going to be handling a lot of shows and uh, hopefully bringing some business side, some softer side to cybersecurity, um, and uh, before the break, you were talking about your your lineage, yes. and your your newly found um, royalty here. I don't know whether <laughs> yes. to to Neil Bow or what is it. <laughs> just kidding. But uh, that that is just amazing. That um, after so you had no idea prior to that. I had no idea. I knew. I had lineage to the Mende tribe, but I really didn't know what that meant. Uh -huh. You know, I was real proud of it because I read up on it, and I had professors contacting me who had done work like anthropologists and linguists mm -hmm. with the language because it's a very interesting tribe. They retained a lot of their cultural practices hmm. in spite of colonialism, and I was told that you really don't know who you belong to. This is a fascinating tribe. And I really saw that when I got there. But I don't know how to speak Mende. They speak two languages, Mende and Creo. I'm learning. Okay. I have a student that's been assigned and is to it, me. Is English pretty much still universal there too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. They speak English and um, they have been independent for 58 years. Okay, so yeah. the time that we went, they were celebrating their independence. So we got a Good, chance. The, the to double whammy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's that's everybody should go out and do their DNA testing. What's that? Oh, uh, yes. What's that called, that um, that site that does that? Oh, there's several. Okay. Um, yeah. There's, history or Ancestry.com. Right. Advertise for that's it. a popular one. You might find out you're related to a, a king in Europe or a king a somewhere absolutely. else. Absolutely. You know, I guess so. Huh? Something not to take for granted. That's that's interesting. So now if we spun to cybersecurity, not exactly your background, but you're learning, getting plugged in. Yes, I am. Learning how to connect the business aspect of cybersecurity. Because cybersecurity is kind of that thing, if you take the business, the, p the business needs, business operations, the people, the human aspect, and the technology, cybersecurity is the thing that connects the three. That yes. holds controls in technology, for the people, Absolutely. it enforces what the people do with the business. It enforces the business processes, and all either done by you know policy, which is the people aspect of cybersecurity, right. and the business aspect, or technology and controls. So those you know that that kind of three way connection starts with cybersecurity in the middle. I'd say starts with, but it, it has cybersecurity in the middle. And for so many years, people looked at business and technology is separate. Mm -hmm. But it is really cybersecurity that sets the things we can enforce with people and with our business controls. And our business needs is what determines how we set cybersecurity. So our, if you look at it, our business needs determine what privacy controls we need. Hmm. And then we okay. design our, our cybersecurity to enable the privacy mm -hmm. controls and needs. 
So basically what you're saying, Chris, is that it's an important part of strategic planning. It should be. Um, and a lot of times the two have been held separately. Mm -hmm. We'll say in the past, it's the last couple of years I've seen kind of an awakening in this direction. And I know our shows on risk management and using security to enable your business have just done great with the numbers. So I know people are interested in it too. Mm. That and we have like 7,000 CEOs that listen to the show regularly. Oh, that's awesome. That's, and is if you look at our demographics, we've been breaking that down a lot lately to say, because we have sponsors coming in and they always want proof. Well, how are you hitting? How many people are out there? Man, that is hard to determine in a lot of times, but we don't have a big consumer market. It's amazing. We, cybersecurity, and I think I've said this on past shows, there is real no cons consumer market in cybersecurity. What does a person buy hmm. on the street? Do you go to 7-Eleven? Is there anything in cybersecurity you can buy in a store that you would go to on the street? Mm. No. No. So cybersecurity really has a business to business or government to business or consumer to business. Wow. Say entirely. So mm -hmm. when you look at, and, um, and now I'm stumbling because I forgot what I was, I forgot the point I was making. How did I start that conversation? <laughs> Talking about the business to business? The business to business. And, uh, mm -hmm. and cybersecurity is really that thing that enforces the privacy right. policies that we put together. There was another point I was making, but heck if I can remember. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I, I really enjoy, you know, listening um, to you speak about this because... I, I see it as something that the general public just takes for granted. And, and but that is because there's nothing really for the general right. public. I think that's actually, uh, and you've heard me talk on blockchain, mm -hmm. where we're looking at trying to sell something that is consumer-based. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that on purpose because we've realized there's no consumer market. And we're trying to say, how can we make one? Mm -hmm. But I remember where I was going with that, so we'll come back to that consumer market and mm -hmm. blockchain in a little bit. But um, I was talking about demographics. And when we looked and trying to prove certain demographics of who's interested in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. we found that there was 700 CEOs, CEO title people at all levels, from Fortune 100 down to startups, that are participating on our mailing lists, mm -hmm. on our message boards, on all kinds of things. They're the ones that know they have to do something with cybersecurity and are just looking for who's out there mm -hmm. talking about it, who's putting the latest in, 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 the, in the industry together. Mm -hmm. And that just happens to be New Cyber Frontier. Uh, one, you know, so our trends are showing us that we're probably two to four times the followership of anybody else we can find out there in cybersecurity. Yeah. So quite a big presence here. Um, and that's actually why I moved from being just me two mm -hmm. years ago to bringing on Mr. Thompson, Dr. Murray, mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Bliss as well, that we're, that it's going to be occasionally Gretchen. And just having different people in the community, in the cybersecurity community, mm -hmm. that have different focuses. Hmm. Take over a particular aspect of cybersecurity because I realized how big we are getting with the industry following, just looking, they're so hungry, they're just looking for somebody, mm -hmm. giving them something. Mm -hmm. You know, we s speak um, a great deal in the sustainability arena about knowledge management mm -hmm. as it relates to technology. And that was the thought I had as you were speaking, CEOs and various um, audiences uh, reaching out for information so they can stay connected to what's current. Um, mm -hmm. I think you're doing a great service. And you too. You're the one coming in. So you'll be <laughs> taking on some of this great service. <laughs> but, yeah, it is really something that, um, like I said, I, I have a startup and I teach sometimes and a million other things, working on a Ph.D. Mm -hmm. And, uh being the, the only hat, hat on this for a while was, was was a lot of time tasking for me, and I'm glad to be moving to having a bigger picture here. Wow. Adding some more companies, some corporate sponsors, and mm -hmm. people like yourself that can mm -hmm. bring that business perspective in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to have some conversations down the road, you and I again, about, you know, 
what your experience was after the first six months. You know, how did how does that mm. that come into what you expected? And I want to bring you back on and kind of pull that. And, um, you know, because we are, you know, the group of us and other people that bring on and some of the experts in the industry, the experts okay. that are helping everybody give the hand up, even if it's just you coming in from a business background, talking to the cybersecurity people mm -hmm. and getting that message out that they have to bring. So we're definitely glad to have you on. Thank you, Chris. And I can't wait to write my first review. That's Reviews, a goal. Huh? You know what? I will also tell you one more thing, and we'll be we'll going to break after I tell you this. Is We don't get many reviews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's not because people don't like us. Mm -hmm. It's because cybersecurity people are very passive, introverted, mm. not on the forefront. You know, and um, in general... We're all what I call simulators. We okay. like to gather information. Okay. We like to go out and listen to everybody, be be aware of everything that's going on, sample all the different knowledge areas, know that we have a breadth of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to participating, again, why we're here, because it's hard to get people to do that. Wow. I get uh, just now, I mean, like, like last week we did all the posts and... And you look at things like likes when you put stuff on social media. And, um, you know, I get two to three comments somewhere on all the social channels hmm. on each show. But I'll get like, we get like 30 or 40 people that'll like different things and different postings and everything. And that's up from, from the first year. It was like you, you talked and you didn't even hear an echo back. Wow. And that's what causes people just to give up on it. Mm -hmm, cybersecurity mm -hmm. in general they give up because they talk and nothing comes back wow. I would challenge people just to engage mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. to bring that echo back so one we see what you're interested in and two maybe we know how to direct what the new things are and any advice on people we bring in host, guest you know, reach back out to us, let us know we're going to take a break here, hear from our sponsors we'll be right back in a couple minutes Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. We're on here talking to our breaking in, getting our wet behind the ears, our new <laughs> host, Dr. Wanda Kusar. And uh, you know, before the break, I kind of put that plead out, and I'll do it again here, is we would love to have your participation. We'd love to have you give input to Wanda's shows. Tell her what you'd like to hear. Yes. Tell her what types of things that she said that, were of interest you'd like to hear more of, mm -hmm. say, hey, that direction wasn't too interesting. You know, we'd rather not have those, but we can take constructive criticism mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So let us know where things might get better. Mm -hmm. And we're always looking for those sponsors and people that want to get message out. I kind of was saying earlier how big of a reach we have and how many focused people in cybersecurity. It's definitely a great market tool. And if you are a company, we'd love to have you as a partner. And we're looking for those financial sponsors, so please do that as well. Um, but your background in business, so how do you see? Um, and we started talking about sustainability mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and blockchain, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people um, hear me harp on blockchain a lot. I actually try to stay away from it and listen to what our our sure. hosts have to bring because I know that's that's my big big area I focus on. Um, but sustainability and blockchain, the connection you said you saw. Yes. Tell me about where your thoughts are with that. Well, uh, I also have a background in um, consumer sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a financial services arbitrator. Okay. Certified. Okay. And uh, I, I arbitrate uh, with attorneys complaints that clients might have 
against reputable agencies or firms. Mm -hmm. So I see a connection there because often that client lives in a different location from the headquarters of the firm. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I saw. How can blockchain keep our firms honest with their clients? The the social impact, right? Yes, the social impact. Mm -hmm. Um, Another area that um, I have gotten involved in is uh, career coaching. And there's a certain level of confidentiality that a good career coach must maintain with their clients Mm -hmm. and uh, developing their contract, uh, securing information that your client is giving you and ensuring that that doesn't get into the wrong hands. And also research um, when we're going through something called the Institutional Review Board, we have to report how we're going to ensure the confidentiality mm-hmm. of the information, the interviews that people uh, are doing so it doesn't do any damage to them or their organizations. Mm-hmm. So those three areas are where I see. You know, and I hadn't looked too much blockchain. into that as a as a main main area that we're implementing in. Hmm. But when you think, how are, how's that done now? Just by people's opinion, right? It's all he said, she said. Right. So if, how are, and you said you're involved with some arbitration, mm-hmm. how do courts and the decision-making bodies that have to take those conflicts in that have really nothing other than this opinion versus that opinion, how are those resolved? Well, they're resolved by having experts. It's usually a panel of three. Mm-hmm. And we are responsible for reviewing the complaint. And we're also responsible for reviewing the firm's policies uh, that are being questioned. Um, which also, that's intellectual property. Mm-hmm. So we have a dual responsibility keeping the intellectual property of the firm confidential Mm -hmm. so it doesn't get into the wrong hands and keeping the situation that has occurred requiring that someone file a complaint confidential because we're talking about large sums of money we're talking about stock investment type of complaint oh yeah but we're trying to keep them out of the courts Mm -hmm. because mediation is a little bit more cost effective for both Mm -hmm. the firm and a client yeah huh and how often do these get resolved, we'll say, so both parties are happy? Well, I have just started. I started the in latter part of last year. And the reason I took an interest, Chris, is because, you know, a lot of what I um, consult in and teach is management. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to lose my financial skills, okay, because I have an MBA as well. So... It's very effective because there's an organization by the name of FINRA Mm -hmm. that uh, presides over our training as well as receiving the complaints. And then they select the arbitrators Mm -hmm. that have the expertise. And, you know, I wish I could tell you exactly when this started, but they are headquartered in New York. And a lot of people seek their Uh, seek arbitrators through this organization. Interesting. So it's, I would have to say it's been very effective. They're constantly looking for arbitrators because of the growth. Mm -hmm. So how often are these like technology oriented or do you see that they're like a cybersecurity thing in question between a company and a well, we have, to, we have to take an oath of arbitration. There's a platform that we go to. We mm-hmm. have um, so you can't you know, talk our about login. Right. We, our login. We have our password. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we, yeah, we have to take an oath. Not only that, we will keep what we know confidential, but also that we will report anything new that we're involved in. Like today, I'm getting involved in cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. I have to let them know that, you know, I'm involved in a podcast on cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. It's almost like having a um, 
a security check. They went back clearance, 20 years. Huh? Yeah, security clearance. They went back 20 years huh. into my background. And you know what they were looking for? What were they looking for as um, to just what to would make be, sure. say, flags? What would flags be? Um, um, anything unethical. Um, gotcha. Any participation in fraud. You definitely can't have a bankruptcy, mm -hmm. okay, because you're mitigating uh, financial concerns. Mm -hmm. um, your reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, I even had a lawsuit <laughs> that I was a party to um, when serving on a board mm -hmm. that came up. I totally forgot about it, but, and I didn't report on it, and it just surfaced. And they said, are you familiar with this? And I was like, oh, yeah, I was serving on a board at that time mm -hmm. when this occurred. Um, and some trainings that I had in situational leadership and Sean Delaney, I, you know, just took those for granted that I went through as an executive. Mm -hmm. And they dug and found that. And they were like, why didn't you put this on a report? And I was like, oh, wow, I'm sorry. They said, <laughs> this is pretty important that you had this training because mm -hmm. this could qualify you to mitigate a particular case. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So huh. they, they find it. They check all your social media sites. They call people that you know and they talk to them. Hmm. So interesting. And um, like I see, you're, you're getting more into judicial. You know, you're actually kind of working up there as a, you know, on your panel, but mm -hmm. like a judge. Mm hmm. And I, I am curious as that progresses to, to get more insight from you on how cybersecurity issues and cybersecurity roles could be improved with that knowledge of what types of things are coming through arbitration. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm sure, I mean, it was just, you know, not just too long ago that companies didn't even have a p policy for t IT, for technology, for how, how you use our equipment. And then there were some big lawsuits that people were using the equipment for something that was, you know, obviously like running a, a site out, out of a company's web server mm. All you know, and most of the the traffic was at night time. So you kind of get an idea what kind of site you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the company sued the employee and said, you know, you're not allowed to do that. But the company had never put a policy together. Right. Yeah, that's a problem. So until some of those landmark kind of um, precedent setting suits or cases happen, com you know, the the policies and now they're a big thick book that you come in and here the first day they slap a book of policies down they say sign our policy how many people have ever read the whole thing right and yeah. and it's important or have the time to read so it. let's talk about that because everybody out there listening has clicked the yes i read all the documents mm -hmm. right how much of a you know what types of things are we missing when we just click that button you know how much what impact that's going to have us down the road right um if something were to occur, uh, I'm going to use education for example. Say a student escalates for mm -hmm. one reason or another, and you have not read the policies. But can't you, if it happens, go look it up then? I mean, this it is might, what we think well, when we click it that button. Well, it depends on the severity. You know, if the student um, is suing the organization, mm -hmm. it might be too late. And it doesn't hurt to review those policies periodically because, you know, if you're required to, if policies are updated, say, on an annual basis, you read the policies and then you just forget about them. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. So how many, if you think about the other way around, how many companies are in arbitration with employees that are not following the policy right? Do you see that end? Well, what I see, um, and it's kind of the impression I got from the cybersecurity conversations, typically it's too late. The company's gone. Or there was a company, you know, I won't mention the company that I worked for a couple years ago, and someone sends me a LinkedIn message that this company is out of business, and they were in business for more than 20 years. And it was because they didn't have certain policies in place and a client sued them. And the client has not been compensated yet, but 
you know, that company. I just couldn't believe it. They so were the very reputable company. put them out of business. Yes. Yeah, it put them out of business. Damaged your reputation. And mm-hmm. they had an excellent reputation. That's why I went to work for them. And I was just shocked hmm. when that happened. But often it's too late because the reputation has already been damaged. It, the complaint is out there on Google. That's mm-hmm. how I found it. Someone said, Google them. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to a training for all entrepreneurs because I have a small business. And we were advised, Google yourself periodically mm-hmm. just to see what's out there. One time I was nominated for a what they call a uh, author on tour award with a national organization for arts and letters. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that a book that I wrote was available on Walmart online. I had no idea. And when I Googled myself, it came up. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Walmart is selling my book. And you weren't getting any royalties, huh? I was not getting any royalties. Yeah, but I was in a publishing contract, and apparently Walmart had gotten a hold of the material and mm-hmm. bought it, and they're selling the book for more than I'm selling it for. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, you yeah, know, we're kind of reaching the time. We, we usually mm-hmm. run about 30 minutes, and you'll be doing the person looking at the clock here in the future <laughs> here. Is there anything, as we close, you wanted to put out that, you know, um, that you are passionate about or the reason why... You know, I'm here doing this because, you know, what do you want to close with? Well, you know, I, I do adjunct teaching uh, for three universities, graduate and undergraduate, and I think it's important for me to keep myself informed mm-hmm. um, because I'm going to be a better instructor. Um, and all three universities are extended studies or career education, so I also have to be a person with business knowledge, mm-hmm. right? I just can't. Uh, be a person that comes in and writes curriculum and talks about what's in the textbook. They want me to share that real world experience. And that is the appeal that cybersecurity and blockchain has. Mm-hmm. Okay, keeping me current and also just helping the community mm-hmm. in the sharing of knowledge. Yeah. I think I have a responsibility. Well, definitely. We appreciate it. And, uh, Thanks for joining, and we'll look forward to hearing more from Dr. Wanda Kassar. Have a great day. Thank you. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at NewCyberFrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.